Ellen Hale is the last surviving member of the so-called Stander Gang of South African bank robbers. Hale met his accomplice, uh, Andre Stander uh, and uh, Lee McCall in the 1980s while they were in prison together in South Africa. Hale had been uh, sentenced in 1977 for an earlier bank robbery. Stander and McCall escaped from prison in August 1983 and broke Hale out of jail in October of that same year. The, them, the men then began a crime spree which ended in uh, late January 1984 when McCall was killed in a shootout with police. Stander, who had then traveled to the, uh, to the United States of America, likewise uh, died in a uh, shootout with police. We are now joined by Ellen Hale uh, to hear the life and times of this one-time notorious criminal. Ellen, uh, welcome to Crime Watch. Thank you very much. Nice seeing you again, Yusuf. Fourteen years later, you are a free man. How does it feel? It's overwhelming. It was, you know, you can imagine I'd gone into prison in 1977, which was not for one robbery, which I, it was for five robberies in Pretoria. I received 15 years. I was sent to Zondervata prison. I, and uh, I'd been there for about four years. And I was planning my escape based on the fact that I could go for my trade test. Um, Andre Stander uh, joined me in the, uh, the foundry where McCall and I were wo working. And he decided that, uh, you know, having heard me explain the, the, you know, the need to have to find a way of going outside of the, the prison for escape, he decided to go to a physiotherapy clinic. And he and I could not be seen together because we had already been identified by the authorities as being security risks. And Andre Stander was a cop at the time? He had been a police captain when mm. he got, yes, he was, he was serving a 17 and a half year prison sentence. Okay. What happened then? Uh, well, he got caught and he, you know, so this is where I met him in prison. Okay. So he recruited McCall to assist him from the, the physiotherapy clinic on the understanding that McCall would be taking his leave that same day and he would fetch me at the at the uh, at the uh, Willifonsfontein trade test center mm. 31st of October two and a half months later and he walked and he had McCall with him so that was the so-called Stonder gang, which was never supposed to have been more than just so, Andre and I. Yeah. So what happened? You guys broke out of prison? No, from the, that was from the trade test center. They escaped from the physiotherapy clinic, yeah. overpowered the warders there, took the car, took the firearms, and two and a half months later came and fetched me from the trade test center. The date of my uh, um, test having been known to them, to him prior to him escaping. What happened then? Well, uh, we then proceeded over the next two, two and a half months um, to start robbing banks at the rate of three at a time. Hmm. Well, three consecutively. The same blue car, the same city, and then ten go days would go by and then we'd repeat it in the same city, same blue car, same modus operandi, slip into the city, slip out having robbed three banks. What was the modus operandi, uh, Ellen? It was literally a case of driving around very slowly and carefully until we find parking in front of a bank. Walk in and pull out the firearms? Walk in, no, no pulling out of firearms. Just let the tellers be aware of the fact that we've got... And we would go from teller to teller, leaving the banks, often with, with the people still waiting to do their banking transactions, totally unaware of what had happened. Security guards opening the doors for us. <laughs> and we would drive away very quietly. And on one morning, having just robbed two banks in quick succession in Bramfontein, around the corner from each other, we then, I'll, I'll never forget, we, we decided we were going to go out of Bramfontein and go up Louis Boerter Avenue. Yeah. When lo and behold, having turned the corner, there was a bank <laughs> with parking in front of it. So, you know, I remember Andre still said, Oh, we can save a bit of petrol, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you guys went in? And no, 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 no. We pulled in there, and I was getting out of the car already when Andre called me back in, and he pointed. And there was a policeman. You know, we refer to him subsequently. Uh, we read about him in my book, yeah. uh, Rambo. And there was Rambo across the road from us on the first floor uh, balcony, looking left and right and left and right 
looking for us. But these radio going off, no doubt reporting those two banks on all the, the radios. And were you guys faces covered? I beg your pardon? Were your faces covered? We, what we tried to do was, whenever we, we went robbing, we would try and make our appearances, uh, you know, resemble those of what the police were showing on television and in the OK. But once we get home and we remove that stuff, the wigs and the... Uh, and whatever, yes. Yeah. Andre had dyed his hair blonde. I mean, I, I looked like entirely different from, you know, I was wearing contact lenses and I had a little goatee. I looked very different. So, yes, we, we, um, we certainly looked like the, the photo uh, fit photographs of us. So the cop and, was, uh, the cop, can we get back in, getting back to that bank, the cop was in the bank? No, he was know? across the road on a balcony. And did he, did he not see you guys? He never saw us. You know, and I thought about it often after that because I thought he was no doubt in his mind expecting things to manifest in the way that, you know, you see Steve McQueen in the movies mm. coming around the, the corner through a red traffic light, skidding off tires, pulling up in front of the bank with a screech of tires, doors flying open. We run, <laughs> and we decided, we sat there and we looked at this guy for about a half a minute. And we looked at each other and we realized... You hadn't seen us. The, blue, the most infamous car in the country, the blue Cortina. Amazing. <laughs> so we strolled into the bank. Uh, I kid you not, my hair was standing on end. We strolled into the bank and we robbed all the tellers. And we came out and he was still looking for us. <laughs> and we drove away. Yeah. And you're giggling. I yeah. remember Andre giggling as well. And he's saying to me, I wonder what he's going to say to Brigadier von der Linde in 10 minutes from now when he says to... I never saw them, hmm. and he would have been quite right. Alan, how many banks did you rob over that period of, what, two or three months? It, it was 20 banks. And how much money was made? You know, we never counted the money. Eh? Eventually, it reached a stage where the money didn't matter. It was about a half a million rand, 1983. A lot of money at the time. It was a lot of money, but it really didn't bother how us. How did the law eventually catch up with you? No, they never caught up with us. McCall was traced. Look, McCall never took part in those robberies because he had got, been involved in a car accident. He broke his jaw, he broke his ankle. So he was totally out of commission. I used to, ironically enough, take care of him living up in a house in Linmayer. But he eventually came out of the, 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 the plaster and the, and the wires and drove into the, the one house in Houghton. Mm. Even though I had seen the police arriving there two or three days earlier and I warned him about it, but he was a hothead. He went in there. The police have made their first breakthrough in months. They go in there and they shoot their first lead. Mm. Instead of watching him, watching the house, putting a, a, a tracking device on his car, no, they went in and they threw hand grenades into the house. And then apparently he did shoot himself. And despite all the bad things that I say about him in the book, as far as I'm concerned, he paid his debt to Andre and I by virtue of the fact of not doing a deal with the police. Mm. Because he could have made quite a, a decent deal with them. Because like I say, it was Andre and I who had done all those robberies. And he wasn't originally in prison for robbing banks. He was in for car theft. So he... he in saving me, he paid with his life. You, you, were, you were first sentenced in a British uh, court? No, I was, no? I was sentenced in, uh, uh, in Pretoria, in the High Court in Pretoria, and then? for 15 years. And then we escaped, and we robbed all those banks. Mm -hmm. Andre got shot dead in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. I made my good my escape to the UK, where by following very carefully what Bruce... Uh, Ford, I said in his book, um, uh, Day of the Jackal, I became a different person, Philip John Ball. And uh, things went a little bit wrong with for me in the UK, and I ended up in Greece. And I met a f person there who decided that we're going to go, we, we decided that we go through to the UK, we, 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 we commit a robbery, and come back to Greece and open up a restaurant that mm. was available for sale. I got caught. I got a nine-year sentence. I was released. Andre, in the meantime, had been shot dead in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Okay, prior to my... You were then extradited back to South Africa? Deported back to South and Africa. served how many years in jail? 27? 
in total, if you include those years before oh. my escaping, the years in England, and the years here in South Africa, 27 years. So you served your time behind bars? Yes. Ellen, your life in prison, a very difficult period, I would imagine. From the point of view of it being dull and repetitive and boring and purposeless. But I managed to make the most of it for myself. I got a degree in, B, in, 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 in philosophy whilst in prison in the UK. I became a far better person. I started examining myself, trying to come to understand why it was that I had been my own worst enemy. Because, you know, when we commit crimes, Yusuf, we're committing crimes against ourselves. Mm. But if we, can, if we can adopt ourselves as being our own best precious friend, mm. we won't do those bad things to ourselves. We will value ourselves. So why did you do it in the first place, Alan? Well, I, I was a chronic depressive. I had dropped out of teacher's college. I got fired from a job. And in that desperate state that I was in, mm. I couldn't imagine myself. I, I was unemployable. I had reached a stage where the depression was so bad that I was a dysfunctional misfit. And I was living in Cape Town in, in Weinberg, and I happened to be strolling past. <clears throat> I was probably on the verge of suicide when I strolled past a little one-man bank in Weinberg one morning. I thought to myself, you know, I took that image home with me. I don't value myself. So I can start thinking of myself in terms of being a criminal. Mm. Because my self-respect is, is fractured. A good self-respect, and you could not think of things that could harm your self-worth and your self-respect. But I had zip. I robbed it. I used my finger. I never had a getaway car. I never had a gun. I robbed it with my finger from Ellen, behind my coat. Mm, crime doesn't pay. Um, you you spent your time in jail. You've come out. You now, there's a, you've written a book. Uh, there's a movie uh, that no, came out. You I, to to I, totally dis I totally disassociate myself from mm. that movie. Totally. Why? And I mentioned it in the book as well. It wasn't us. We, we weren't anti-apartheid heroes or anti-apartheid activists. Mm. It, it, it was uh, written, the screenplay, by a bunch of very lefty uh, um, Canadians who believed that Andre had shot a lot of people dead during the riots and he was making amends for what he had done. Mm. I totally disassociate and I mention it in the book as well. What now for Ellen Hale? You, you've, uh, you've gone on a um, road show speaking to young school children saying crime doesn't pay. Um, is that your future? Well, I've been doing it, I've been trying to do it for the last 14 years, but I've become yesterday's hero. I've been, I've been forgotten in, 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 in the annals of, of time, but wherever I can, I still do. But I'm looking to be able to raise the capital in order to do a, a mini-series of the events in the book. What will the intention be? Well, the intention will be to, to, to show that notwithstanding the fact that you eventually believe that you are infallible, it's just always a matter of time. You will get caught one way or another, sooner or later. Mm. I evaded the police here, yeah, but I got caught in London simply because I dropped my little address book at the scene of the crime. Mm. and. And that's how I got caught. Ellen, how do we better rehabilitate prisoners um, once they're out of jail? Now, you need to rehabilitate the whole prison system mm. and all the crew that works inside there. You need to give them a decent salary. You need to empower them with the sense of, of uh, doing a very, very important job. They've got, to be, they've got to be the catalyst, like I experienced with the staff in the UK. They've got to be the catalyst between yourself and recognizing yourself as being valuable and worth it. If you can start considering yourself to be and be treated decently, then there's the basis from which you can start working in terms of empowering yourself and not wanting to continually make a fool of yourself by harming yourself. Well, very interestingly enough, uh, statistics made available to Crime Watch uh, by SABRIC, uh, the South African Banking Risk Information Council, shows that uh, Bank robberies have come down from, what, 72 in 2009 to just one this year alone, year on year. A dramatic decrease. Perhaps the robbers are using different modus operandi and targeting uh, different uh, 
uh, institutions. Thank you very much to Alan Hale for joining us. After the break, we speak to the president of Crime Stoppers International.